Speed Channel's coverage of NASCAR comes to you tonight from the Richmond International Raceway. It's final practice for tomorrow night's Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Short track racing for the fifth of six times this season. A rough and rugged night ahead tomorrow night. And it's already been a rough and rugged afternoon for some here at Richmond today. This was about one hour ago in the first of today's two practice sessions in race conditions. Check the very right side of your screen. Never see the cars uh, getting ready to go back out. BP. What? You know what? Sometimes when you're out there racing and, and something breaks that you're not expecting it to. Yes. We've just rolled into the garage with our replay machine. It broke. It broke. Uh, we'll show you what happened a moment ago. Trust me, though, Jeff Gordon hit the wall in the first of today's two practice sessions. They've had to pull the backup car out. Let's find out what happened to Jeff Gordon. Here's Dashing Dave Burns. Well, and we'll ask him for just a little more detailed description then since we haven't seen it yet, although I'm sure we will very soon. Jeff, what happened with your car today? You know, I, we've had kind of a crazy day. Uh, uh, this is the second wreck of the day. I wrecked on a golf cart earlier today, and uh, I think I'm actually hurting more from that than I am this wreck. Uh, uh, it's silly, uh, really. Just had a throttle just hang on the, there's a little floorboard there, and it just it hung on it, not full wide open, just enough to where it carried me in the corner too far, and I locked the wheel front tires down. They just carried me in the wall. So unfortunately, got to get the backup car out. Bugs uh, not been real good uh, here, here at uh, Richmond. So I'm the only thing left of Bugs Bunny, and we'll see what we can do with our uh, DuPont Chevrolet with the flames on it. That's right. They're not going to change the decals on that car, but they have pulled a lot of the components off of that primary car and put them on this backup car, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, this is a brand new car. Um, we feel pretty good about it. Doesn't have the kick in the nose. Uh, doesn't have the, the same motor. We've changed a few components on the engine, carburetor, intake. Um, Springs and shocks and all that stuff we're, we're pretty much all set on so felt you know I got to make about eight ten laps there and didn't go real fast at the beginning but it really started coming in there late so we'll uh, we'll work with it during this practice and see what we can do to come from the back to the front. Jeff what does this do to your momentum back to back wins chasing down Sterling Marlin and now this. Well it certainly challenges us and I mean if anything this year we've we've been challenged so uh, uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna have to overcome adversity and this is step one of that and you know, we're uh, we're not going to give up on it till that checkered flag flies tomorrow. Well, he's right. There was a time this year when you might not have expected Jeff to contend for the championship. Sounds like just a minor setback for these guys. They'll rise to the challenge. Marty? Well, Dave, some uh, breaking news here in the Winston Cup garage area. The Sullivan County Sheriff's Office in uh, Tennessee, which is where the Bristol racetrack is located, today an announced an ongoing investigation of an alleged assault following the Bristol night race a couple of weeks ago involving Tony Stewart and a lady who was standing by his hauler. Uh, evidently, they're accusing Tony of pushing the female fan out of the way. There have been no warrants issued here, but again, we just wanted to bring you up to date on this ongoing investigation that has been announced. Now, the team, Joe Gibbs Racing and Tony Stewart, are completely cooperating with this investigation, and uh, they are trying to figure out exactly what happened with this female fan, and we expect the statement from Joe Gibbs and Tony Stewart tomorrow. Again, this breaking news just coming out just a few moments ago from the Sullivan County, Tennessee Sheriff's Office. That's all we know at this point, and uh, Tony has declined comment to this point. I just asked him if he would stop and say a word about it, and he declined comment to this point, but we do expect something from him on this tomorrow, guys. Okay, Marty, and welcome to Speed Channel's coverage of final practice. Alan Bestwick here with Benny Parsons. Told you we'd get those electronics working there a minute ago. Hey, we saw a lot of fireworks in the first race here at Richmond back in May. 14 caution flags tied the record for most yellow flags in a race here. Are we going to see the same thing tomorrow night? Oh, I doubt very seriously we see that many caution flags, but this place lends itself to caution flags because, number one, all the practice is done during the day. And then, guess what? They're going to run, run the race during the night, and it's so hard to simulate racetrack conditions and this racetrack is very tough last time especially it seemed to be what's the word while he uses slickerier Sli slickerier slickerier than than something. ever before and these guys used to run two by side by side with these it seemed to be more difficult here in may interesting to see what's going to happen this time i think most everybody's watching this nascar bush series race tonight to see if these guys can run side by side let's talk about track conditions here one of the criticisms in may was that the sealer that the racetrack applies here and has applied in the past with great success 
was perhaps put on a bit too thick, and drivers, if they got up off the bottom lane of the track, went for a ride into the wall, and it caused a lot of the yellows. Will track conditions be better, and are the drivers trying to feel that out here in this final practice? I think the track conditions will be better, and some of the guys that tested here felt like that the conditions are better than they were before. So, yes, I, I think it's going to be better. And last night in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, in watching that race, I saw guys make passes on the outside. Rick Crawford, a truck, they would try to pass him on the inside. He'd move up, give him room, but he was able to maintain on the outside. That was encouraging to see that he was able to make that much, run that well up on that second groove on the outside. A few minutes away from the start of the final practice. If Jeff Gordon's going to refuse to lose with Bugs Bunny on board, he's going to have to do it from the back of the pack tomorrow. Coming up immediately after final practice coverage, it's NASCAR trackside here at Richmond International Raceway. 7 o'clock tonight, Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Jeff Hammond, and Michael Waltrip. Talk about tomorrow's race and a lot more trackside immediately following happy hour coverage here on Speed. Marty. Alan, one guy very impressive in the first practice just a little while ago was Johnny Benson. Did the car feel as good as it looked, JB? car feels pretty good and we're, we're real happy James and the guys is doing a tremendous job and and uh, we're gonna try a couple things for this one to see if it's gonna get a little bit better but we're happy with it right now I know the disappointment for you was was great here in June because you had such a good car in happy hour and you thought you could win that race but never got to run that race yeah I know what I'm, I'm debating what I'm gonna do tonight <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just uh, so I don't get hurt but stay uh, away from bush car okay stay away from the bush cars I gotta watch them from a very far distance so no we should we should be in good shape so um you know, like I say, Valvoline Pontiac's good, and we're, we're just bumping the track a little bit harder than what we'd like to see and just change a couple things, and I think we'll be okay. Very small changes. When you go into happy hour making small changes, that's good news. Dave? For Rusty Wallace, he had to make some big changes after qualifying because of qualifying 23rd. I know you were disappointed with that. How good was the car in the last practice session? The car's real good in practice, and believe it or not, it was going to be real good in qualifying. I just, I, I got real aggressive. I drove it really deep down into turn three. It got it up underneath me. And then son of a gun, I'd go do it again down at turn three, trying to get all I could do, but still went too hard. But it's a good car. We were fourth quick in practice, and uh, everybody knows there's a lot of money on the line this week, and I'm trying to do a good job. That's right, an extra million dollars yeah. if you can do that. You've won here six times. How does it feel so far this weekend? Does this feel like a winning weekend? It does. I mean, I, I've got so much pressure on myself to do well because it's been so long since we won, and we got so close to Bristol and didn't get it there. And Everybody's looking at me this weekend to try to get it done, and now I'm going to have to come from the mid-pack up to front to do it, which is, uh, it, we can do that. All right, got a champion's heart. He can get it done. He's going to climb in the car now, get ready to go out for this final practice session. Alan? Last win for Rusty, the California Speedway, April 2001. He'll go for one here in Richmond tomorrow night. Back at the Richmond International Raceway, live coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup final practice, and they're off. Tony Stewart, the first one out. Mark Martin. So I think I noticed that Mark ran 54 laps in that first session. And you notice the bright red numerals and spoilers on that car. Mark, one of the five drivers, eligible for that Winston Noble $5 million bonus. Tomorrow night, if you can win the race, Mark, Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin, Rusty Wallace, and Michael Waltrip, top five finishers from the Pepsi 400, back at Daytona Independence Weekend. Oh, starting spots not too good. Mark no. Martin, the best one is fourth. Mark runs. Mark's got a terrific record here at Richmond OBP. I'll tell you, he, he could win that thing. And he's already got it once this year. Remember, he got it Memorial Weekend at Charlotte in the Coca-Cola 600. That would be pretty cool to win two of those million-dollar bumps in one year. I'll tell you what. Mark Martin has scored one victory here at Richmond back in February of 1990. Talked about Mark picking up the million dollar bonus already this season. This was the Coca Cola 600. Late night, Sunday night of Memorial Weekend, checkered flag, and the million dollar donuts. And I tell you what, Mark Martin, those last few laps of that race at Charlotte, ran about as hard as he ever had in his life. 
All right, Marty, speak. Well, BP, if I was the race fan paired up with Mark Martin tomorrow night, I would sleep pretty well tonight because they are very, very happy. You talk about those laps. He ran the first practice session, very consistent laps, very good on the long run and all tires. And right now, Mark's going to be on a very long run here. They have the setup they think that can win the race tomorrow night. They're going to test it out, leave them out there for as long as they can, maybe 40, 50 laps, and to see how good this car is. Well, Tony Stewart is, a, is very faster than Mark Martin right now. Marty just blew by Mark. Very faster than? Very faster than. Oh, yes. okay. That kind of ranks right up there with Slickery. Yep. You know, the one thing we don't know, though, is tires. Who's got what on between these two cars? If Tony is just faster than Mark, or if he's got fresher tires, or, or what the deal is there. Let's talk about Tony for a minute. You heard the little uh, report that Marty made a little while ago. That's off-track stuff going on. Well, it's a distraction, though, and you don't want to. I mean, Tony Stewart right now, for the last since... The Brickyard 400 has been one of the most focused human beings in this whole world on the job at hand. Drive this race car and do it to the best of your ability. And this is just another distraction. And, and if, again, if it has merit, well, obviously, it needs to be looked into. Richmond has been Tony Stewart's track, without question. He has made seven Richmond starts. He's led five of them. He's won three of them. In fact, he's won two out of the last three races here. This was a year ago in May. Checkered flag for Tony Stewart. And then this past May, the rain delayed race run on Sunday afternoon, and Tony Stewart did it in the day like two. How about his car now, Dave? Alan just checked in with their crew. Right now, Tony's car was a little bit tight between sessions or after the end of the first session. So they changed a couple of things on it. They went more toward what they ran here this spring. It's been a busy week for Tony. Yes, it has. He went and ran at Darlington last Sunday in the Southern 500, went to DeCoin, Illinois, Monday, ran an ARCA race in an Andy Petrie car, finished second there, ran the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race here last night for Petrie, won it, then qualified earlier today in 14th spot, and he'll finish it off after this practice with a run in the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 tomorrow night. He must really be sad he couldn't find a race in the Bush Series, a ride in the Bush Series tonight so he could race four or five nights a week and uh, word from the garage area is that Stewart did start on sticker tires for this practice session so he might just have a little rubber advantage on Mark there Mark tank with him pretty tough yep there he is check out the uh, yellow car right there Dave Blaney crashed in practice this morning they had to pull out the backup car was the last guy to qualify and he put it on the inside of row two, equaling his best ever Winston Cup qualifying. This was the practice crash from this morning. Just gets off, just gets loose off turn two. We talked to him and he said he was just trying to run faster than the car was capable of. And, and you see the damage too great to use that car. So they went to the backup and he will be able to start in that spot, correct? Right, because he qualified with that car. This car. Blaney in search of that thus far elusive first Winston Cup win. His best finish so far this season was a ninth out at the California Speedway in April. There's Kenny Wallace and Bill Davis is 23 given way. Jeff Green fastest so far in final practice for tomorrow night. Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond. You're watching NASCAR on speed. is a problem that well, is oil we are under the red flag in final practice here at Richmond Interna International Raceway and that's where the oil came from the nine car so take Bill Elliott out of 19th starting spot send him to the back of the pack along with Jeff Gordon for tomorrow night's 400 lapper there's Mike Ford the crew chief just walked into the picture and saying hmm that doesn't look good and Mike, you and Bill can sit down with the notes from that first practice session where you were 16th best and figure out what you're going to do because there will be no more practice for you tonight. Yeah. So while the track is shut down and they try and soak up some of the oil, let's take a break. Jeff Green fastest so far in final practice.
More live coverage of NASCAR in coming weeks on Speed Channel. Next week, it's the Magic Mile in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Got both Bud Pole qualifying and happy hour here on Speed. And two weeks later, it's qualifying from Kansas City as coverage continues through the remainder of the season. Turning the cars loose back onto the racetrack after the problem with Bill Elliott a moment ago that put out the red flag, Dave. Alan, I just spoke to Ray Evernham, car owner, and he confirmed that it definitely blew up. Uh, you know, it wasn't like they lost a line or something. That would have been lucky, but it definitely blew the motor, so the guys are going to work changing it right now. And the conference on what to do about handling between the team engineer and the crew chief and the driver there. And Bugs Bunny does not get to go around the racetrack for 400 laps tomorrow night. Jeff Gordon, the car was all painted up with Bugs Bunny and part of the Looney Tunes, but used that car up, had to go to backup, and that's the car we'll see tomorrow night. Now, I'm just guessing, it's just a guess, but unless Gordon is really suspicious about that rabbit, there'll probably be a rabbit decal or two to turn up on this thing, you think? You think so? Eh, could be. Unless, unless he's really superstitious about that. Could be. What a couple of weeks it's been for Jeff. Wins back-to-back -back at Bristol and at Darlington. Moved to second in the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. 91 points behind Sterling Marlin. Talk about momentum. First, the bump and run at Bristol. That was the bump back there. This is the hit. As you get by Rusty <laughs> Wallace. He goes on and takes the victory. Yeah. Broke the 31 race windless streak, which by most driver standards is nothing, but for Jeff Gordon, that was a long time. Then last Sunday, just dominated the final 150 miles of the Southern 500 to pick up his fifth win in that prestigious event. Looking pretty good earlier today here at Darlington with a 10th place qualifying run, but then had the crash and now the backup car. Marty? Alan, I asked the team about those Bugs Bunny stickers, and currently there are none here. So I would bet with you, though, I think there will be some that will be made or they will find their way to this racetrack. And the car that Jeff wrecked was a brand new race car, never been on the racetrack. His backup car, a brand new race car that had never been on the racetrack. I tell you what, these Hendrick teams is one of the many teams that, you know, they've got a lot of firepower. When you're bringing out a backup car that's brand new, that's just as good as the first one, that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. But that's how they get to be Winston Cup champions as many times as they've been. No, folks, that's not Bobby Hamilton. That is Greg Biffle. Hamilton last night in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on the very last lap crashed uh, in turn one. And what were the injuries again? He had a broken right scapula and a broken left wrist. And they expect him to be out for what? Three or four weeks did I read someplace? Yeah, three weeks, three weeks minimum. He's got, you know, he's got one on both sides. I mean, his left wrist, his right shoulder. Ouch. Man, be hard, have a hard time trying to eat. What are they saying down there, Marty? Well, I just talked to Bobby a little while ago, BP, and he said that the contact with the wall was not what injured him. He said actually his own truck, which hit him after he hit the wall, and then several other trucks hit him after he hit the wall. That's when he got injured. Doctors told him three to six weeks, but his goal is Martinsville. That's when he wants to come back because Martinsville is his favorite track. I can understand that, yes, he, and he runs so well at Martinsville. So Greg Biffle on loan from Roush Racing to run that 55 car tomorrow night, looking for what will be his second Winston Cup start. Dave, what's up with the 12? Brian Newman going back on track right now. They replaced the front sway bar in there. I talked to Matt Burrell and his crew chief. What they're trying to do is get it not to go loose on the long runs here at Richmond. But he did report over the radio when he was talking with Ryan. He said, we've always got something we can go back to. And that's the way you play happy hour. You get your baseline, make sure you've got something to use, and then try and see if you can make it even better. He stuffed that thing up in the first practice? Yes. Remember, he delayed qualifying. He was supposed to be out 15th, but they allowed him to. Oh, in the first that's practice. He crashed practice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. No, I was just looking back, and, and I don't remember the, the numbers being all scarred up. Stuffed up. I thought the, uh, the earlier practice crash he had today was just that very right rear corner of the car. Dave, help us out here. Well, and I talked with John Andretti just a few minutes ago, whose whole left side or whole left side of his car was all scarred up, and apparently Ryan and, and John got together um, on track during the last practice session. So he had the marks on the right rear side from that earlier practice crash before qualifying, and then he had this incident with John Andretti. So he's had a lot of contact already. Oh boy, Dave. 
They're right on top of things. There you go. When the right side's beat up on one car, usually the left side's beat up on another car. Well, let's see if we can have a look. Here's John Andretti in the 43. Oh, yeah. Yep. He got in a little cheerio on the side of that one. And by the time they're done tomorrow night, the other side and the front and the back and everything but the roof will need some bending to get it back in shape. Andretti will start in the 31st spot tomorrow night in Richard Petty's Dodge. And right now, there is John. I'm trying to find him on the scoring monitor here, BP, and I'm, I've lost him somewhere. I'll locate him in a minute. You talk about Jimmy Johnson. 14th. Thank you. Jimmy Johnson, pole sitter, just 28th fastest in this practice session. He was third best in the first session, though. So, again, I think the car is very good. They're just trying some different things right now to see if they can get it better. And now we see Jeff Burton in the 99 car. Big news this week, a new crew chief for the 99 car, Paul Andrews has moved over from the one car, the Pennzoil car, and has become the crew chief on the 99. And Frankie Stoddard is adios. Looking for work at this point. I talked with both Jeff and Frank this week, and um, basically Jeff just felt like that, that they had gone stale together, that the ideas weren't as free-flowing between them as they had been in the past, and that it was just time to make a change. The analogy he used on me this, this uh, morning when we talked in the garage area here, Jeff, was that you know, sometimes a baseball team changes the manager just to try and create a spark, and maybe that they just needed to bring somebody else's ideas in to create a little spark there and push this team a little farther forward. Marty? Yeah, I talked to Paul Andrews earlier and asked him how the learning curve this week, and he said he really didn't expect a whole lot. He hadn't had much time to talk to the guys, but the benefit of being here at Richmond is that this is a mechanical racetrack. In other words, you can adjust the car mechanically. It's not an aerodynamic sensitive racetrack that much, so that makes the learning curve a little smaller for Paul, and that helps him out a little bit this week and helps the guys get used to him, and he can make simple adjustments rather than trying to figure out the aerodynamics of a Ford versus a Chevy because he did come from a Chevrolet team to a 14. You know, we saw Paul Andrews on top of the truck watching this 99 car go around the racetrack. And it's amazing to me. See, those guys, all those crew chiefs, run to the truck and jump on top and watch it go around the racetrack. And believe it or not, they can see things about what this car is doing as it goes to the corner. And they can help set the car just by watching it go around the corner. It's an amazing thing to me, the touch and the feel that some of these crew chiefs have. Matt Kenseth, one of the other Roush Racing entries here this weekend. Currently fourth best in this practice session. Pretty good. Going to start 25th tomorrow. The only driver who's got a top 10 finish in all of this season's Winston Cup short track races so far. He's been in the top 10 when the checkers have waved in all of them. Nobody else has done it. Rusty Wallace. And right now, Rusty Wallace, the qu quickest time in this practice session. Mr. Richmond, six times he's won here. Thirty-seven Richmond races, Rusty's average finishes eighth. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive. And Rusty Wallace will be joining us in oh, about an hour and a half to do the NASCAR. Craftsman NASCAR Bush Series. There you go. Yeah, Bush cars. What's up with Jeff Gordon? Well, Alan, his car's a little bit tight when he hits the throttle, but if you can see on the top of his helmet, he's put a piece of duct tape. Also, inside the windshield, a piece of duct tape. The sun is really bothering him when he comes off turn two. That was the biggest thing he wanted. They did make a shock change, however. The car was a little bit tight, again, when he hits the throttle, but he's pretty happy. Same setup they had in the other car, and they liked that one before. I'll tell you what. That shield on that helmet, it was so dark, you almost couldn't see that black tape there, but about half the shield is taped off. Try to keep the sun out of his eyes. Jeff Gordon, ninth fastest now in this backup car. Rusty Wallace setting the pace and happy hour practice at Richmond for tomorrow night's Monte Carlo 400.
Speed News will have the latest for you on the world in motorsports every Saturday and Sunday night on Speed Channel. Sunday, the first half hour of the show is the NASCAR edition. It's all NASCAR. Then at 7.30 Sunday night, the rest of the motorsports world. Check it out. Speed News, Saturday and Sunday on Speed Channel. Sterling Marlin, the 40 car, the NASCAR Winston Cup points leader. He'll start back in 32nd position tomorrow night, and right now he's 24th best in this practice session. But I say 24th best, but that's only about less than two tenths of a second slower than the fastest car of Rusty Wallace. So speeds are very, very close, very, very tight. If when the race starts, this car is perfectly set up, he should be able to march right through the field to the front. And talking to him at the end of qualifying after he wound up relegated way back in the grid, he didn't seem concerned about it at all. Jeff Green, fastest or second fastest so far in this final practice. Let's hear from him in the garage. Well, that's only been recently, Alan. He was the quickest on the chart just a little while ago, and he was quickest in the session just before this. This all after qualifying 29th today. I asked Jeff about that. He just said the car lost all grip in qualifying. He's not really sure why. And as to why he's so good here now, well, he is pretty good at this track. He has one win in the Bush Series. Jeff Green knows how to run Richmond. Talked to Jeff some yesterday here at Richmond, and he um, felt like it was time for them to turn it up. It started to make a little progress over the summer, then they kind of leveled off again, and he said, we need, to, we need to start running up front a little more. And this is a good place for, as Dave said, he runs so well here, this would be a good place to turn that wick up. Talked about them putting some tape on the windshield of Jeff Gordon's car, a little um, man-made visor there. And you can see the tape where they put on the inside of the windshield to try to keep that sun out of Jeff's eyes as he comes off turn four. Yeah, not like you're giving the wall a whole lot of breathing room when you come off that corner anyway, so you don't want to drive straight into it because you can't see it. That would definitely be not too good. Not good. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, it's going to be kind of fun tomorrow night watching Gordon and Marlin come from the back of the pack. Uh, Rusty Wallace in the middle of the field. Some of these other guys up front, like Newman and Johnson, try to run away from them as fast as they can. Marty, got something? Well, I'm trying, Alan. Johnny Benson heads back out on the racetrack now. If you look real quick, there it goes. They had made a man-made visor on his car as well. He not as good this practice. We talked about how good he was the last practice. Just not as good as this practice. They were tight early on. Now they're a little bit loose. They haven't hit it quite right. And they've fallen down the charts a little bit, too. So JB not as happy as he was in the first practice, but still has a pretty competitive race car right now. Actually, 14th best this session. <laughs> After Darlington last weekend, they'd be pretty happy with that. I'll tell you, they had a tough, tough weekend last weekend. And you can see that he has tape, a lot of tape on the grill of the car to block the air going inside to keep the water temperature at the right feet. Did you hear what, what eventually, what was wrong with his car? That the secondaries on the throttle and the carburetor were sticking as he went into the corners at Darlington. So he was having a really you know finesse the car to keep it off the wall and keep it keep it going the throttle was hanging in the corner and, and jeff Gordon said that's what happened to him why he crashed earlier today in that first practice session the accelerator was hanging on the floor mat yep. in the car the floor mat they put to keep his feet as cool as they possibly can and somehow the accelerator hung on it and got him in the corner look harder than he wanted to get in the corner and he couldn't handle it in the wall he went Greg Biffle still running well, third fastest, Dave. And pretty good for this group that just started working together today. Jimmy Ellis, of course, is the crew chief on this car. And he told me earlier today, the main thing that he was working on earlier today with Greg was that Bobby Hamilton drives that car differently getting into the corners. Bobby tends to roll it in, arc it into the corner a little bit more. Greg tends to drive it in real hard and slam on the brakes. They seem to have overcome that when I checked with their group just a little while ago. They're just making some shock changes to see if they can make him a little bit better. Minor changes, they're working well together. Ricky Rudd out on track. Seven fastest right now in final practice. He'll take the green flag tomorrow night in sixth spot. And so one year ago, it was Ricky Rudd having a nice little tussle with Kevin Harvick in which they traded some sheet metal with the old veteran coming out on top. 
is an exciting finish. Yes. And John Warren <laughs> falls off pit wall trying to celebrate. Now see if he if he does that this year, he might get the golden Benny. I, he's a winner if he does that, but it has to be impromptu. He can't stage it. I talked with uh, Doug Yates there and Ricky Rudd over the last couple of weeks. There have been some stories and some quotes uh, that where Ricky has, has told some people that he doesn't feel like he's getting all the horsepower he had been getting earlier in the season before the uh, announced split between himself and the Yates team. Naturally, their, their opinions on that are very different. Rick, that's Ricky's opinion. Doug Yates, who's in charge of the engine shop there, says, no, we're giving Ricky everything we've got. Nothing different than was before, so. Obviously, they're uh, going to agree to disagree at this point. Marty? Well, he's pretty good right now, Alan, and uh, they are very consistent, and that's what they were gunning for. I talked to Mike McSwain, his crew chief, uh, before happy hour started. He said, you know, we just want to develop some consistency. Ricky says that this setup they're on right now, he can run the bottom of the racetrack better than he's been able to run it since he's been here. It really hooks that bottom yellow line. That's what he likes to do. And the car, brand new car, they did have the advantage of a Goodyear tire test here as Ricky heads into the garage right now. And they've tested two days here for Goodyear, and they use this brand new car. The only time it ever run was at that tire test. Dave? Marty, get your pen and paper out. Here's what Bobby Labonte is going to do. Take down this list, and uh, we'll see if it helps him or not. Rubber in the left rear, more camber in the right front, up on the rear bar, four tires. And then Bobby Labonte is going to take this car on a long run, probably the last one they're going to do today, and see how all those changes react on this car. He'll be starting 18th. He's currently session uh, in this session. He's currently 18th as well. Alan? Wow. Big adjustments. Quite a few changes. Yeah. And he's doing... You know, he's, didn't Dave say he was going up on the left rear spring, but the stronger left rear spring, which is tightening the car up. He's moving the Panhard bar up. Uh, that was up on the rear bar, uh, Benny. Rubber in the left rear, up on the rear bar, more camber in the right front. It's, and they're doing off, see the bigger spring, bigger rubber in the left rear spring, tightens it up, moving the Panhard bar up, loosens it up. Yep, so, so that's kind of a compromise right there. He just, he's, trying so, he's trying some different things to try to get the car to roll through the corner the way he wants it to. And so the Joe Gibbs team with uh, much work to do to get Bobby out and get some more laps in before this uh, session ends. Here's Dale Jarrett on track. Back in 11th, he's in the 11th spot in this practice session as far as speed is concerned. And going to start in 12th place in the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Dale's won here before. Mm -hmm. And I expect to see him run well here tomorrow night. Good qualifying effort for Todd Bodine earlier today. Seventh fastest. However, however, not too good in this session. And he wasn't that good in the first session. 20, 30 second best. And about to bail out and head for the garage and get some more work done on that thing. We'll take a break here. Rusty Wallace fastest. It's happy hour coverage from Richmond. NASCAR action coming up this weekend on the tube. You'll see tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern on TNT, the NASCAR Bush Series race from here in Richmond. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the poll for that one. And tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern on TNT, the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. It has nothing to do with Wally and Benny. Marty? Ricky Rudd is done, and I was just singing your praises, talking about how happy you were with your race car, Ricky. Well, Marty, it's a, it's a lot better car than we've had in many, many weeks. Uh, I hope it's good enough to win. It's going to be, I think, it'll run up in the top five, top ten anyway, and it's uh, driving pretty good, and that's about all we can ask for at Richmond. Horsepower okay this week? Well, you know, I always use more. You know, I'm a typical driver. I always wish we had a little bit more, but, you know, the 88's pulling a little bit lower gear than we are. they got a little different motor combination. Uh, they seem to be a little bit stronger off the corner, but I think they're kind of questioning whether to live or not, so... Uh, we, we got a little different gear, but a, basically a proven engine combination. Seems to be pretty good. We are a little bit weak on the first part of the straightaway, but it seems like it helps the handling. All right, there you go. They must feel confident because they're done for the day, Dave. Lee Marlin is uh, searching for speed, Marty. Right now, I just checked with his crew. 
And they said he's really pretty happy with the handling of the car, but he just can't seem to have the speed that he wants. They stiffened up the rear end of that a little bit by putting spring rubbers in each side, changed the right front spring as well. And now they're probably going to go on the longest run that they've done to date uh, so far in this session. Only 15 laps has been the most he's gotten so far. Now they're going to try to get at least 20 or 25 before this session's over. Okay. Story on Sterling, 23rd. <laughs> what is that all about? Turn around, he said. Turn around, take your picture. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. What are those pictures taking? Say cheese. Cheese. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he must have him a new toy. Yeah. The cat in the hat. Let's see. He should be pretty. He should be pretty happy right now. Got a couple of his cars in the top five. Steve Park, how's he doing? Well, 33rd right now. Of course, this uh, team without Paul Andrews here this weekend, having moved on to the 99, that is being headed up this effort by Steve Meal, the, uh, ta the uh, technical director at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, as well as the team's engineer, Dave Charpentier. Steve will start in 38th place tomorrow night. He's got two top five finishes in his last three Richmond races, does Steve Park. How about Ricky Craven? Well, he's doing about as well as his beloved Red Sox right now. 31st best, and Kendrick goes blowing by. What's up with those Red Sox? Aren't they really good? Yeah. 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 Let's stick with racing. Sorry I brought it up. He had a handful of steering wheel coming off of turn four, so obviously he wants Mike Beam to do something with that thing. Petty. Another driver that seems to be struggling. He's 40th best in this practice session. Kyle with finishes of 15th and 13th the last two weeks at Bristol and Darlington. So kind of creeping farther forward, a little more consistency. You'd think that, and there we see the 44 car of Jerry Nadu. 24th fastest now for Nadu. Marty? Jimmy Johnson's here, Alan, and uh, they kind of bounced all over the map today. They started to die tight in this practice session, went too loose because they made uh, too far of an adjustment. They've now put in a bigger front sway bar that makes the car a little bit tighter, keeps it down on the left front, which is what you want to do everywhere, especially here at Richmond. But this car itself has uh, been to Victory Lane here before with Jeff Gordon in 2000. He took it to Victory Lane in the night race here in 2000, which uh, was a September race then. And uh, Jimmy ran it also at New Hampshire earlier this year. Led a lot of laps with Jeff Gordon. Hasn't been to victory lane with these guys, though. But they feel pretty good about their shot tomorrow night. What's up with Sylvester? What's he looking for with all those claws? Sylvester the cat. He's looking for Tweety, Tweety Bird. Bird. Tweety Bird. Where's Tweety? But see, Tweety's behind him. you got to look on the back end of the oh, car. Oh, Tweety's on the front on the hood as well. Yeah, okay. Tweety, Tweety's behind him on the rear end there. Oh, so. okay. See? He's... And you know what Tweety's saying? I talked. I talked. I talked. Footy tap. Yeah. I did. I did talk footy tap. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson headed back out for more happy hour practice here in Richmond.